After one hour, this is what I made in Godot. And after three hours, this is what I have to show for in my game dev journey. So what does 100 hours of development in the Godot game engine actually look like? Let's start right at the very beginning with the first prototype I made a few months ago. So last year I made my first ever rage game, but then I thought, what if I reimagine this game in a 3D environment for my first project in Godot? I spent my first five hours making this parkour prototype, teaching myself the foundations of development, like setting up a first person camera, basic movement physics, and then more complex features like a propelled motion based on where your cursor is aimed and a timer high score system. The prototype was cool, but my subscribers wanted to actually play the game. So I spent the next five hours improving gameplay features like adding screen shake, knockback, a death system, basic water physics, and of course, polishing up my level design abilities. Also just wanted to shout out Google's 58 for speedrunning the hell out of this game demo. He absolutely crushed everyone's score with under half my best time. Even as the game's developer and the creator of the game's mechanics, he still completely destroyed my high score and everybody else on the Discord. Okay, so in the first 10 hours, I built out a physics-based parkour mini game, but the next 40 hours of development in Godot, I built out my first actual game I could release on Steam. The Recurrence is a game I created with the pure intent of making something quick, but polished, and of course, diving into the realm of horror games, because, you know, that's what everyone's doing right now. So starting with creating a walking simulator, and then building out new skills in lighting, adding fog, particles, and the dreaded enemy AI. We now have a full-on game made in Godot with 50 hours of experience, but also 50 hours of 3D development as a whole. I've been building video games for quite a few years now, but moving from 2D to 3D comes with tons of unique issues and obstacles. So honestly, this was a huge accomplishment for me to release my first 3D Steam game in just eight weeks. Okay, so I've created two projects already, but I decided to switch gears and buckle down to start production on my first major 3D commercial project. So for the next 50 hours, I decided to create my first real commercial game, Mancers of Magic. So far, I have taken this game from a third-person camera controller to learning new skills, like how I can aim in a third-person perspective to accurately detect an enemy in a line of sight. This is actually much harder than I ever thought it would be, building an accurate aiming system in a third-person camera. But anyway, I also, of course, had to create some more complex enemies with actual attack animations, projectiles, and even character dodging with an invincible dash mechanic. But for those who have been following the devlogs and the live streams, I want to share brand new content to wrap up the 100 hours of development in Godot. In the last 10 hours of developing Mansers of Magic, I decided to finish creating my jungle biome with a nice new Crystal Meadows area with tight corridors for close combat battling and the Stump Swamp area to focus on more vertical platforming. But now we can move on from the jungle biome for a little while and focus on some new mechanics. The last thing that I added into the game was creating real stats for the players and enemies, which you can see a chart breakdown of all of the different stats in the game and what they do for your character. This will be very important as we start building out customization options in the game through item collection, leveling up with potential skill trees, and assigning stat points in the way that you want to build out your character. One of my all-time favorite aspects of games that I've been playing recently has been in the character building and character customization aspects, so I'm really excited to build this out for my game. Adding in real stats into the game that modify your character's abilities is the first main step to setting up all of this. All in all, I'm extremely happy with how my 100 hours of development in Godot actually went. The best way to learn is to create small projects that focus on different aspects of what you would like to learn so you can start building out the games you truly want to make, which is exactly what my first two games were setting me up to do. From learning the basic foundations of movement and physics to creating polished visual effects and enemy AI, these projects set me up for creating the game I actually wanted to make when starting 3D game development. If you want to help support my work, make sure to wishlist Mansers of Magic on Steam and subscribe to the channel for more videos coming soon.
Godot was definitely a great choice for me when starting to move over to 3D development. So if you've been thinking about making the swap, now is the best time to do so with how much support this engine has been getting recently. And that is exactly how my first 100 hours in Godot actually went. 